you very much, folks. And today, today, I'm, 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 I'm angling, man. I'm going to our space. What do I mean by our space? I'm talking about the media. I'm talking about journalists. And we're we'll talking to two very, very, very prominent, well-respected journalists, at least on my list of journalists that I respect. They two come very, 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 very high. Show some love, man. Come very high. Um, Incidentally, they both happen to be coming from uh, multimedia. Um, trust me, it's just coincidence, but I, but I love them. The first one I'm going to talk to, Seth Kwame Boateng, this man, he's a journalist with a difference, man. He's on the ground and he lifts issues up, increases awareness that get attention from anybody. The man in the street to the president, they all look at this conference and they sit up. Put your hands together. Show some love for Seth Kwame Boateng. <laughs> Hey, there you go. There, there, there. Oh, man. Good to have you again, man. Yeah, good to be on yeah, the yeah, show. You're great, That's man. A, you're great. fantastic show. It's an honor to, to sit with you. Oh, wow. And wow. Hear you ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you do a lot, so I have to come, come back to you. Mm. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we shall roll. Stick around, folks. Seth Kwame Boateng in the house when we come back. We're dead. We'll be right back. Stay cognizant for a recrudescence of gratuitous conviviality and merriment. <laughs> so, welcome again, man. Thank you. you. you know, every time I invite you here, because you've done something extremely great mm -hmm. and is worth commending, then I invite you. Now, but now, not quite you. My phone, now, but not quite you. Why? <laughs> Why? Because we can't stop. <laughs> you can't stop. We, we can't stop. We have to use. The little gift God has given us to help change things in this country. And you're doing that. Uh, so we, so we can't stop. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, the, your most current thing, why I have you here today, among other things, is this documentary that you did, uh, Next to Die. Next to Die. That was in March. That was in March, man. Yeah. That was so powerful. Mm. That was so powerful. Can we just, just take a second and look at the, a quick clip from Next to Die? Take a look at this. So last year, 2016, we had 91 women dying as a result of pregnancy and complications in Confano There's no reason why any woman should get pregnant, walk into a hospital to deliver, and then lose her life as a result. As you can see, we have only two women. So um, unfortunately, if you have more than two patients delivering at the same time, it means that one person has to deliver elsewhere. At times, we have patients delivering on the, on the floor because um, the place will be full, the patient will come in second stage, and that you need to conduct the delivery on the ground. And we have two of them, but unfortunately, today, this is the only functioning theater here. Uh -huh. So this is the only theater we are using for the whole day. So this is the second theater. But unfortunately, the, the table is ready, everything is ready here, but the machine who is supposed to be here is not functioning well, an aesthetic machine. And without that, we can't do any case. Sometimes at night when I come and I want to enter my office, there's a mother and I sleep on the floor in front of the office. And it's very, and some of them sleep, you know, with their, some of them sleep on these benches, some of them lie on the floor with their legs on the benches. It, it gets very, very crowded at night, very, very crowded. The hospital has managed to secure one room for all the mothers, but the only difference between this room and the prison cell is that this room does not have an iron gate with heavy padlocks securing the doorways of prisons. Imagine about 100 mothers having to share this small space. This unit is no respecter of persons. Whether you are rich or poor, you have no choice but to use this room. Babies sleeping not in pairs but from four onwards in a single court. It is so bad that they even share sensitive life-saving machines, including incubators. I am not an expert, but I can deduce how they have been lumped together is dangerous. And who is next to die? <laughs> and we're back, and, and that's next to die. And tell me, this documentary shook Ghana. Mm. I mean, everybody sat up. Mm. How long did it take? How did you come up with this? And just tell me about I had been told of the problem way back in 2013. Mm. But I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, so a number of doctors had also called to tell me about the problem. Again, the I, problem being? Being 
congestion leading to needless deaths at the hospital where we have about four yeah. babies dying every day yeah. in that and, health and, and facility. And I like just yes, needless death. Yeah, because the doctors death told me... should happen. Yeah, yeah, the doctors told me most of the deaths can be prevented and where on the average about 100 women die annually at the hospital when they go to deliver. So they had told me of this problem. I thought it wasn't any big deal until February when I went to Confonoche on a different mission. I went there to do another documentary. That will, one will come and the title is Men at Risk. Men at Risk? <laughs> Men at Risk. <laughs> it's on prostate okay. cancer. So I went there to do this documentary and one of the doctors, Richard Solome, Dr. Richard Solome, he had been calling me to tell me about the problem. I met him there. So I was ashamed. So I told him, oh, I'm here to do that work. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here and I'll make sure I do it before I go. So I used just two days to do that documentary, the shooting and everything. Just two days to do that. Wow. And I came back to Accra to do the script and everything. And we started. Wow. Mm. So did you just sh shoot with the footage as much as you can and then you came to Accra to put the script together? Or you have a rough I ha I story? A, exactly. Yeah. I, I had been told of the problem. Okay. So I had a better appreciation of the story, the, the events that there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I had also good directors who were with me. So they helped me with the shots and everything. We put everything together. Um, it's one story that I've done that really affected me. When I was shooting, I... I didn't feel it until I put everything together. I sat down and I also watched the documentary. Mm. I asked myself, did you really do this? So you saw these pictures? Did the doctors really tell you these stories? And I felt sad after watching the documentary myself mm. because we, we can't allow this to continue. The whole, um, the, the whole country felt sad. The second sad. biggest hospital in this country, seven, not only Kumasi, but about eight other regions. So you, you might think, you are in Accra, so you should not be concerned about this. Or you are in Eastern region, you should not be concerned about this. No, think of it the other way around. You may have relatives in other regions, because Confinante serves Bronga Hafo, the three regions up north, part of Eastern region, part of Central region, and even Western region. So you may think you, have, uh, you are in Accra or Eastern, so you're not concerned. Remember, you may be traveling from Accra to Northern region, you may get to Confonache and you may need help from there. Yeah. And that's the problem. And sadly, women are referred, some from, let's say, Gosso. Uh, they need immediate CS, caesarean session. And they are rushed to Confonache and they are also asked to join a queue. Hmm. Because they, the whole Confonache, the maternity area, they have just two theaters. And it gets to a point where about five women in need of CS are rushed in at the same time and they need CS immediately at the same time. So at that point, the doctors would have to decide, decide okay, so who should we attend to and who, sh who should die? Wow. When I was doing the documentary, I mentioned they had two theaters. One had broken down. So only one wow. theater was functioning. Last two weeks, I went back and I got so sad. A woman was brought in. She had just gone through surgery. She needed um, intensive care, um, something, a place that they can give her quality care, intensive care, and that place was full. So the woman was on the stretcher on the corridor. I asked one doctor. The doctor said, she may die. She may die because the place is full. And there's nothing the doctors wow. could do about it. And this is an absolutely needless Needless. Death. And strangely, yes, I, I said, you, you may think, you, those watching us, they may think it's far from them. Two weeks ago, I went there. One of my cousins saw me. She didn't call me. I was with all the big guys, the CEO, all the doctors at Confonochi. We were doing some rounds. She didn't call me to tell me she was there because of a hey, baby. I go home. Around eight, they called me that your cousin's baby died. I confirmed. I said, and she saw you, but they didn't call. I said, what? Wow. She saw me. I confirmed. She didn't call me. And so, it's a whole issue. It affects all of us. We can't allow this to continue. We can't wow. allow this to continue. Wow. These are needless deaths, and we can reduce. It has to. It's congestion. And guess them. The congestion was envisaged way back in the 1970s by General Kutu Champong. 
He saw this in the 70s. In the 70s. So he started a move to construct um, that huge facility that we just we saw in the documentary. And it's been abandoned. The last time contractors worked on that project, it's 995 bed uh, capacity facility for mothers and babies. The last time contractors worked on that project was in 2008. It's never been a priority. Two thousand and eight. Yes. So we started this project in the 1970s, 1974. We've still not been able to complete. Hmm. That's hmm. the issue we have. And, and, and the, only, the only comforting thing about what you've done is it let people sit up exactly. right away. Exactly. You got the attention of uh, the first lady and no. the president? Yes. So um, after the documentary, I got a number of calls from, from people, a number of calls. Then the, we did a presentation. We presented a copy of the documentary to the first lady. And she told us that the first lady and the, the second lady, Samira Baumia, both told us they would take, they would work on it. So a week after, the president went to uh, Confonoche, and he was shocked. He spoke to the authorities, went to the abandoned project, and promised that he'll find money for them to fix, to continue the building, and 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 reduce their needless deaths at mm. the hospital. Mm. Mm. And mm. we have been told that even if they get the money today, the contractors told us that it will take them like two years to finish. So. We thought of, so what can we do in the interim to ease the congestion and reduce the deaths, especially babies? We can't allow. When I was putting the documentary together, one day, 10 babies died. 10? Ten. 10 babies died, all because of congestion. You know, the, the place is so congested that four babies are seen in court and incubator. Or ideally, each baby must have a court and incubator. Yeah. But here's the case. Four. They share at times four, six, even eight. In an incubator. And yeah, and they pass on infection, so cross infection. So they die just like that. Just like that. So when we presented, the first lady said, We have to do something about this. We can't wait for two years. So what can be done to ease the congestion? Then we brainstormed. We went back to Confonochi to see if we could do a, an extension to some of the buildings. Yes, we identified some of the buildings. We sent engineers down to do assessment. They realized, no, it will cost us more if we are to do adjustments over there. So why don't we start something from the scratch, which will be cheaper? Wow. So we got the engineers to do a design, and they're going to use some of the modern, modern, um, modern building equipment to do it. And we need, we need uh, Nisha. The Nisha cost is 10 million cities. If we get that today, in three months, we're going to have a facility ready, uh, 1,500. Um, square meter facility and it's going to be the size is thrice the size of the current maternity and mother and baby unit in, at three, the months? in three months yes they're going to work day and night and going to use some of these uh, these prefabricated materials mm -hmm, or the, yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're going to finish in three months so if we're able to do this and god willing they finish the main building we can move to that building and use what we've just built for another purpose mm. so that's what we're looking at mm. yeah mm. wow <laughs> How does it feel for you, um, you know, when, when a story you do get this kind of attention? And, and why it has not been all this time? Does it, does it take a journalist like you to raise our awareness that we have a, a building that we have been trying to put up since 1974? 74. Yeah. You know, um... I feel excited, and the only thing I do is to thank God for that. I, that's what I've been doing, just thanking God for the opportunity to serve my country. It's not about me. It's about the, the hundreds, the thousands of lives that we are touching and what God is using us to do. So I'm always thanking God to use me to change things in this country. Uh, so I get excited when such a thing happens. For example, uh, I was in a meeting with the first lady and the second lady. I sat there and I asked myself, I said, come on, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> is that you? <laughs> yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's how it is. Yeah. And, um, and, and it's, it's encourages me to, yeah. to do more. Seriously. Um, I have been telling my people 
this one has really drained my energy. I'm very tired because mm. since I broke this story, I've never had rest. Mm. Every, almost every week, one meeting or the other. Meeting this, doing presentations, uh, the, some of our embassies, the embassies in Ghana, meeting the uh, ambassadors doing this. It's been tiring, but um, for God and country. So we have to do this. Uh, we, we can't allow this to continue. Mm. So that, even though I'm tired, I'm energized. Mm -hmm. Anytime mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. about the fact that we are doing this to save lives and that uh, the future generation, not even future, yeah. even those, yeah, it's, it's, it's immediate yes. there, immediate need. Yes. So people are going to benefit and we can save more lives. Because, um, you, you may not be able to stand it when you get there in the morning and you see dead babies parked that they are going to this. It's pathetic. It's pathetic that a woman is in labor and in their delivery room, they have just two beds. Two beds. So imagine five women are in labor at the same time. Wow. Wow. They will tell the three. They can take care of two and tell the three, three. wait in queue. So at times they wait and the babies just drop. Yeah, you can't wait in queue when you're in labor. Yes. <sighs> yes, we can't, we can't allow this to continue. Yeah. So, oh, all Ghanaians would have to help. That's not a political matter. It's a humanitarian crisis yeah. that we have to fix. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we are not blaming any particular government. Yeah. It's a problem which is there. It started not... A humanitarian yeah, crisis. Yeah, humanitarian crisis, yeah. yes. Yeah. That we have to fix. So is there any like address or any place people who want to donate to? Um, yes, we have had the fundraiser, we, right? Yeah, the, with the first lady, we did that in the first lady's office on Thursday, uh, fourth, fourth uh, May in okay. her office, and she did very well. She used her influence to get all the people with money to to come and help us uh, with some money to do this. An account has been opened at um, Access Bank. Okay. Uh, save a child. Save a Mother account. So when you go to Access Bank and what, you, what's the name of the Save a Child, Save a Mother. Okay. And the save a child, save a mother. Yes. And okay. the hashtag is save them now. Save them now. Save them now. Okay. Yeah. You okay. go to any access bank and you can donate into that. So you can just give this name and exactly that'll give you access exactly. to the account. Exactly. To yeah. accounts. And also uh, those you can see a um, mobile money account on your screen. Uh, you can donate into that accounts too and it will get to us. We have to fix this. After Confonoche, I remember telling the first lady that in order to reduce the traffic at Confonoche, we have to tackle the satellite hospitals. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm, if you're able to take care of mm -hmm, the other hospitals, mm -hmm, St. Dress Hospital, mm -hmm, Atunso mm -hmm. Abu Hospital, if you're able to take care of these hospitals, there wouldn't be so much traffic the at low, Confonoche. Yeah. Exactly, and yeah. we can save more lives. So maybe after this one, we have to look at the supports we we'll get. Exactly. The we, yeah, yeah. we can go to the satellite hospitals and help as well. So that's what we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud of you. Mm. I have great respect for you. From all the stuff, you know, you did something on sickle cell yeah. that was completely mind-blowing. Mm. You know, did several others. And then this one, yeah. another earth-shaking, mm. awareness-creating program mm. that gets the attention of the... The, the first lady, and uh, trust me, I think when you get the first lady's attention, you've got the president. Oh, <laughs> you are right. But then, because in the evening, oh, yeah. uh -huh. when they are going to sleep, uh -huh. I'm sorry, oh, with all respect, you <laughs> <laughs> say, hey, 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 you know, can't, 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 uh -huh. you know, how, what are we doing with Kulebu, mm. you know? No, 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 joke, joke, like, you know, all jokes oh, aside, yes. once you have her attention, that's it. it's compassionate like that, she that's will it. definitely move things. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that the fundraiser has been started. Mm. And um, hopefully next time you come here, you come and tell us that oh, yes. the thing is actually in motion. I, I, I trust God and I believe yeah. that we're going to raise that money and finish in three months. We can save more lives. Fantastic. We can save more lives. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And the, 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 the save a mother, save a child, save, save a, a mother. Save a child, save, save a, a mother. mother. And uh, go to any access bank yeah. and please give freely. And let's save a mother and save a child. And the number you're screening, seeing on the screen right now is the number for the mobile, mobile money. Yeah. And if you need, if you have anything that you want to do through mobile money too, the number is on your screen. 
Seth, all I can say is God bless you, eh? And I'm grateful. Um, God bless you. It's an honor to be on the show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's my show. I wouldn't miss for anything. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. I, I know you follow me closely because when I send out my hits, I always get a response from Seth. <laughs> Seth is watching. Oh, okay. And I'm in your bag. Oh, yeah. Seth, oh. Seth, you just... <laughs> <What's that honor? laughs> and I'm grateful for the support and, and the encouragement. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. It keeps me going. Fantastic. Yeah, it keeps me and keep going. going, man. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, thank All you. right. Thanks for me watching. All right. All right. Stick around. Another journalist that I like so well that's also in multimedia, where well, works with multimedia, Manasseh Azuri, will also be in the house after the commercial break. We'll be right back. If you're having as much fun as I am, stay tuned. If you're not, you need deliverance. We'll be right back.